Hello, Jacksonville High School parents and students. We wanted to take a little bit of time to explain a few things to you that are very, very important. Today, we're going to talk about the remote learning process at Jacksonville High School, and we're going to talk about what to do and what happens if your child wakes up sick with symptoms of COVID-19 or if your child has to be sent home because of a COVID-19 reason. First thing you want to talk about today are three different categories when it comes to COVID-19, okay? So these categories are exposure, symptoms, and a positive test. So we'll start here with a positive test. This is obviously the most serious thing. When this happens and we get news of this, several things are done. The first thing is we make a very concerted attempt to disinfect and clean any classroom in which a student that had a positive test was present. Okay, we also have a protocol map that we follow where we try to contact trace any students who might have been around that positive testing student when that positive testing student was last on campus. This is also when we send out the letters to you through Skyward. We also sometimes give a school messenger message, but a positive test is the most serious of these three. It's also the most rare of these three. Next thing I want to talk about are symptoms. So if a student is showing symptoms of COVID-19, either at school or at home, that student also needs to stay at home and self-quarantine for a certain amount of time. Finally, I want to talk about exposure. So if a Jacksonville High School student has a sibling or a parent or a relative that they live with that might have exposed them to COVID-19, this is also a case where that student will need to be sent home for a certain amount of time. Now, there are so many variables when it comes to these three things, guys, that it's very important that our parents stay in touch with the school and that we stay in touch with you. So the first thing we're going to talk about real quick, what do you do if your child wakes up with symptoms of COVID-19? Well, the first thing you want to do is make sure that they're safe and secure and that they get all the medical attention that they need. Then we ask that if it's a symptom of COVID-19, that you call the school. And the best number to call is 903-586-3661, extension 7330. That's the JHS nursing clinic. If those nurses don't pick up because they're very, very busy right now, you can also call 7060 7061 or my number at 7230. But the big thing is, is that you are communicating with us openly and honest, honestly about your child that might have symptoms of COVID-19. Now, if those symptoms go away in a couple of hours and that student's able to come back to school the next day, that's awesome. If your child has symptoms that persist, we'll be in contact with you from a school's perspective about moving to remote learning. We're gonna talk a lot more about remote learning in just a second. So, big thing is, if your child wakes up with symptoms of COVID-19, please contact the school if those symptoms persist so we can start the process, if needed, of moving your child onto the remote learning platform. Okay, so let's talk about remote learning at JHS. So first thing we want you to talk about, or want to talk about, is that we operate our remote learning platform on Microsoft Teams. That's the system that we use is Microsoft Teams. So we've had all of our students the last week and a half at JHS, our in-person students, trained on Microsoft Teams so that if they have to go home for a COVID-19 reason, they are familiar with that system. The model that we use for remote learning, which is also called virtual learning, those are synonymous terms. The model we use at JHS is that every teacher is responsible for in-person learning and remote learning. Now, this is a huge task for our JHS teachers. More on that in a second. 
Uh, they are wonderful professionals. They've done an awesome job, but they have a lot of work ahead of them this year being responsible for both in-person and remote learning. So we use Microsoft Teams. If your child has to be, if your child is a virtual learner, if you're watching this video right now and your student's a remote, a remote learner and they don't know anything about Microsoft Teams, or if your student gets sent home for a COVID-19 reason, exposure, symptoms, or positive test, it's very, very important that your child and that you are familiar with Microsoft Teams. So we encourage everybody to go onto the JHS website and to watch a video titled JHS Remote Video Tutorial. I'm gonna put that up here on the screen real quick because that video, it's about an eight or nine minute video, is very important. JHS Remote Learning Tutorial. And that video is narrated by our academic dean, Miss Sarah Trailer, and she steps through the username and password process the student email process, and how students that are learning from home get into Microsoft Teams to complete their, their assignments. Now remember, Microsoft Teams is used for kids that have been virtual learners all the way since August, and for kids that become virtual learners temporarily because they are sent home for a COVID-19 related reason. Very important to keep that in mind. Next thing I wanna talk about, is that our remote learners, whether they chose remote way back in August or the early part of August, or if they're gonna be temporarily remote because of a COVID-19 reason, we expect them to complete their assignments in Microsoft Teams for every class, every day. Every class, every day. What we suggest is that our students complete those assignments in Microsoft Teams during the school day. Okay, that's the best practice. But they have until 11.59 p.m. each day to complete all their assignments. So the best practice is that our remote learners, those that have been remote from the very beginning or are temporarily remote because of COVID-19, the best practice is, is that they finish those assignments during the school day. But if they cannot do that, they have until 11.59 p.m to get those assignments finished. So when it comes to remote learning, there is a distinction between attendance and grades. So this is very important and it's also very confusing and very complicated and we're gonna do our best these next few minutes to explain this to you. So when it comes to remote learning, attendance is based on three things. So students need to communicate, either communicate with their teacher, make progress on a remote learning assignment, or the third thing we hope all of our remote learners do, which is to complete their assignments. So it's very, very important that for attendance purposes, our students do one of those three things. Communicate with their teacher every day for each class, make progress on an assignment, or complete their assignments. And that third option, completing their assignments every day for every class is the preferred option. So that's how we take care of attendance. Now grades are a little bit different. For grades, you have to do more than just log on to Microsoft Teams. You have to do more than just email your teacher. You have to do more than just start an assignment and you have to do more than just complete an assignment. When it comes to grades, it's about the quality of the assignment. It's just like our in-person learners. If you turn in a paper, if you turn in an essay, well, that's great, but the quality of what you turn in is most important. So there is a distinction when it comes to remote learning on Microsoft Teams. What you have to do to be marked present in class to get credit for attendance is one thing. To get a good grade takes a little bit more, and it's very important that our parents and our students understand that distinction. The bar is a little bit lower for attendance and the bar is much higher to get good grades in Microsoft Teams, okay? Next thing I wanna talk about real quick, guys, is something that's really, really important. And I wanna talk about in-person learning 
and our in-person learners. Now, the vast majority of our campus are still learning the traditional way. They're coming to our school every day, periods one through eight. The majority of our kids are in-person learners. It's really, really important that our in-person learners remember, okay? If you are out, you're absent for a certain reason, okay? You need to come back to school the next day and complete your assignment. Just because you're absent doesn't mean you are a remote learner. Being a remote learner is a decision that's made between the student's family and the school. So students, you can't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I don't want to come to class today. I'm going to be a remote learner because it's Thursday and I want to sleep a little bit later. That distinction, whether you're a remote learner or not, that is a decision that's made with the school in conjunction with the family. So when it comes to in-person learners, we expect our in-person learners to be here every day, learning the traditional way, and that's what our expectation has been and will continue to be. In-person learners, make sure you're coming to school every day, every period, okay? Next thing I wanna talk about real quick. Let's transition to the co-curricular or extracurricular lists, which we're gonna show you right now on the screen. This list went out several weeks ago. We might make a few additions to this when the window opens September 8th to the 11th for the next transition on, on the remote learning platform. But when it comes to co-curricular and extracurricular, if you are a remote learner, okay, but you have a class on this list, we expect you to come to school and we expect your families to provide that transportation to you unless you have symptoms or exposure to COVID-19. If you are a remote learner and you're coming to band class, mom and dad are dropping you off for band and you're going back home after band, right? That's what we expect you to do unless you have exposure okay, to COVID-19, you're exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19, or if you have a positive COVID-19 test. And in that case, you need to stay home. So remote learners that have co-curricular classes are expected to come to school for those classes unless they're exposed, have symptoms, or a positive test of COVID-19, in which case they'll stay at home and they'll go to remote learning until they can come back to school. Very important thing, wanna make sure everybody remembers that. Finally guys, wanna give a, a big shout out and a thank you to our parents, our students, and to our teachers. There's a lot of great things happening at Jacksonville High School the first week and a half. We've been very innovative as a campus we're working incredibly hard, and I wanna give a few shout outs real quick. Our parents and students, the way that we do face coverings at Jacksonville High School, our staff, our students, our parents have bought into that, and it is allowing us to stay open as a campus. Several weeks ago, we said, we stay safe, we stay open. There's been other campuses in East Texas and across the state of Texas that have had to close down for COVID-19 related reasons. At this point, we're able to stay open because we are being smart and we are being safe. Guys, I wanna be honest with you. COVID-19 is not going anywhere anytime soon. Remember, our goal was not to eliminate COVID-19 from Jacksonville, from JHS. It's to limit it as much as we can. And the way we limit it is good, strong face covering programs, which we have in place, smart hygiene, and social distancing as much as we can. We've done a great job of that the first seven or eight days of school. And I wanna thank our students and our parents for their cooperation when it comes to that. Finally, I wanna give a huge shout out to our teachers at JHS. Guys, our teachers are working unbelievably hard and unbelievably long hours. They are responsible not only for the learning that's going on in class with their in-person learners, but also for providing quality instruction to our remote learners. It is a huge task, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility. So parents and students, I truly hope you understand, I know I do, just how hard our teachers are working. They're doing an awesome job and they need our support now more than ever. So thank you JHS teachers for all that you've done. Thank you parents and students for a great start to the 
2021 school year. Continue to offer us that grace and that patience and continue to show us the support that we've come to expect and deeply appreciate from our fantastic JHS parents. Thanks, everybody.